right, welcome back to my workbench. Uh, this is video number four, and wanted to show you the unit. It's all assembled, it's finished, and it's working. Haven't run any major problems. I had a tube. It was either bad out of the box or it, it went bad during the first couple of hours while it was warming up. So I don't know which, but anyway, I replaced the tube and uh, all is well now. Uh, one of the first things after you get it all built, you get power applied to it. Now I applied power to the unit without the tubes in, uh, just to make sure I didn't have any, any major problems, didn't have any fuses to blow and that everything was normal and everything was fine. So then I powered it down, unplugged it, put all the tubes in, and then I powered it up. Uh, assuming everything is still okay, you don't have any, the fuse, the main fuse doesn't blow or anything, uh, you should be fine. Then you can do a basic performance check uh, just to make sure that it is basically performing because there's a couple of things that you have to do after you confirm it's at least working and I'm gonna show you one of them in this video. Um, so what I've done is I've taken a function generator, I've got it set to a sine wave at 1000 hertz, and uh, we're injecting about 1.22 volts RMS between the hot and the cold leads of the XLR, or the hot and the cold pins of the XLR. So we're coming into the unit, and one of the first checks you can do to see if it's working is start to turn up your gain, and while you have the level control uh, or the uh, the meter set to level, you should see your view meter change as you turn the unit uh, or turn the gain up and down. So um, that's one test to let you know that it's just basically functioning. Another test is when you do have some level, turn it up to about zero, and then begin to advance your peak reduction control. Uh, and then uh, when you get up to about uh, nine o'clock, you're gonna start to see the meter should start to back up. Uh, and then as you increase that control, the meter should continue to uh, decrease, which is actually showing more gain reduction. Um, now that's assuming you've got the, everything finished, everything is hooked up properly. Um, another test that you can check just to make sure uh, is that your your in and bypass switches are working. They control the relays that are on the board. You should hear those click when you turn the in and the bypass controls um, or turn the in and bypass switch on and off. So um, uh, also one of the things that I debated about and I did change was the five volt regulator. I had the five volt regulator mounted directly on the board and I was gonna put a small heat sink on it but I noticed it did get very, very warm, so I changed my mind on that, and I've re relocated the 5-volt regulator over to the side of the enclosure, right here inside, and uh, so then I had to run wires to the 5-volt regulator since it was mounted away from the circuit board. Other than that, haven't run into any problems. I've done some basic performance check. I still haven't run any music through it. I haven't heard it. Uh, I'm still in the beginning phases of just doing a full uh, performance check on the unit. But I wanted to show you in this video specifically how you calibrate the two resistors that were left intentionally off the circuit board. And if you look at the bill of materials, um, I think, or even if you look at the original schematic, it calls for uh, a resistor somewhere between the value of like 18K and 65K, somewhere in there. Um, you're going to have to have resistors to go in for R125 and R225. R125 is channel A or 1 and then R225 would be in channel 2. So this video is going to show you how you select those resistors. Now most people start with a mid-range resistance value of 33k so that's what I have in. Um, I have uh, two wires that are soldered into the unit where R225 would normally be in channel two. And then on the other end of this wire, I just basically have some alligator clips connected to it so that I can clip in different resistance values. And I have uh, my trays of different resistance values here so that I can try different values until I get the right value selected. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. Okay, first thing you need to do is Flip your meter to gain reduction because we want to look at the gain reduction. 
and uh, and I guess at this point you also want to make sure that gain reduction is working. Of course, now we saw that back with the level control in the level setting. So if I turn up the peak reduction, so it looks like the gain reduction is working. Uh, so that's a good sign. Uh, I told you earlier that I'd had a bad tube and I was noticing on channel two, I wasn't getting in any gain reduction whatsoever. It was like the gain reduction wasn't working. And the 12 AX7, which is the gain reduction driver, um, was bad. I haven't put it in the tube tester to find out what was bad about it, um, but it was not working. Everything else, it, I did have good level control. I just weren't getting any gain reduction. So replace that tube, everything is great, no problems. All right, so flip to gain reduction, and the first thing you'll notice is that needle is, needs to be sitting on zero when we're not, when we don't have any gain reduction. So there's an adjustment on the board for that, um, and it is called zero adjust. And so I'm going to take my little screwdriver, well, and. We're going to adjust it until we get that meter sitting on zero. There we go. So now in the gain reduction mode for the meter, we have it sitting on zero and that's done obviously with the zero adjust. Now original LA-2A, I think had that setting on the front or that adjustment on the front, but this one is it's internal. Okay, now when we switch to level, we want to turn up our gain until we have some level and we want to get that on zero um, there so you can see that uh, with my zero db coming in it doesn't take very much gain to get zero db on the meter uh, some people make modifications to the unit they'll switch out the 12 ax7 audio uh, drivers or the first stages of the 12 ax7 they'll switch it out for a 12 a uh, a y7 um, helps to lower the gain some. Some people say that it changes the sound of it. Um, or you can leave the 12 AX7s in there and uh, make some resistor modifications to basically change the biasing around the, the 12 AX7 um, and that would lower the gain of the amplifier. So that would allow you to have more resolution or control of this gain control. because. For me, in the LA-2As that I have, this control here hardly ever goes above 20 or 30 percent. Uh, it never needs to go that high. So some people don't like it that low. So that's because of the huge amount of gain that the unit has. Um, all right, so the we currently have zero dB on the meter uh, in the level position. Our gain reduction needle is sitting at zero. Now we're going to go back to level and we want to actually turn up our peak reduction until we really get about five dB of gain reduction. So I'm gonna turn it up and you can see there I have about five dB of gain reduction. And then when you flip to gain reduction for the meter, you should read five and you can see that we're not. Uh, we're reading more than five. We're reading about eight. Um, yeah, eight dB. So you can see there's a discrepancy. Our gain reduction meter uh, is not giving us an accurate readout or reading of what our gain reduction is. Because we know that our gain reduction is five, but the gain reduction setting or the gain reduction meter says we're getting eight. So that's the purpose of R125 and 225, to get those meters uh, synchronized where they agree with each other. All right, so how do you do that? So we're gonna turn our level back down, our peak reduction back down. And the way you do that is you change out or experiment with values of R125 and 225. You can put in a potentiometer if you want to. I just simply use the alligator clips and try different values. And, uh, and then it doesn't take but like three or four different tries for me to usually zero in on it. So it uh, shouldn't be a big deal. So I want to take out the 33K that we currently have. And I'm going to put in a different value. 
Um, so I've, I, and I know what value it needs to be, at least for this channel. And by the way, I've done both channels and the resistor value is not the same for both channels. It's very close, but they're not the same. Um, what affects what value you need is your T4 module will determine that and possibly the tubes uh, in the gain reduction circuit could have a little bit to do with your value of resistor. But uh, the, the primary uh, variance is going to be the T4 modules depending on uh, where you got it from or if you build it or whether you get a slow one or a fast one or um, so if you switch out the T4 modules then you would have to do this calibration all over again. Okay so now if we flip the gain reduction you're going to notice that our needle is not sitting on zero so guess what we have to do? We have to do a zero adjust and get our gain reduction needle back on zero. There we go. And then flip to level, and let's actually get some level coming in. Need zero dB. So now our meter is sitting on zero. A little touchy. Our gain reduction is sitting on zero. Let me tweak the level just a little bit. There. So now the needles are the meters are agreeing with each other with no gain reduction. This says we have zero dB. This setting says we have zero gain reduction. All right, let's go back to level and let's turn up our gain reduction until we get about negative five dB of, or five dB of gain reduction. Our meter should say negative five. Looks good. And then we flip the gain reduction just like that. And that's pretty close. Now you can see where a while ago when we flipped the gain reduction, the needle went to eight. Now it's sticking very close to five. And we could probably experiment with the values a little more to fine tune that, um, but that's not bad. Let's see how it does at higher gain reduction. Let's go to 10. And so then the needle, so you can see it's not going to be accurate everywhere. It's not going to track very accurately everywhere, but it's going to be close. So you pick a happy medium. I like to pick five and get it calibrated at five. And that way, you know, you're going to be in the ballpark. Yeah, that looks good. Showing five dB, gain reduction showing five dB. So that's the whole purpose of uh, selecting the values for R125 and 225. You want to get your level meter and your gain reduction meter in sync or agreeing with each other when you actually have a signal coming in with some gain reduction applied. Well, uh, that was my goal for this video was to show you that. If you have any questions, just post it in the comments. Um, the next step is uh, we're going to get the resistors put in. Uh, now, again, they're just temporarily uh, attached with alligator clips to the wire that I got here. So I need to unsolder this wire out and actually put in the resistors. Uh, and then channel one and channel two will be up and running. Everything looks good so far. Uh, I'm very excited to run some tests on it. That's what I'll do in the next video. We'll run some actual audio tests. We'll look at the frequency response. We'll look at the hum and noise uh, of the unit. Um, we'll look at distortion dis uh, specs on the unit. Uh, and then after that, we're going to close her up and uh, we're going to put it to use. So um, I'll let you see it in action. So it's going to be fun, excited, and uh, thanks for hanging in there. And uh, we're almost done with this project. We got other projects coming up. Now, I'm working on a tube tester, so I'll show you some of that coming up as well. Building uh, two different tube testers, an old-fashioned one, and um, that just does some basic tube tests, and then uh, a tube tracer project uh, where you actually hook it up to the computer and actually can do some detailed analysis on the tube. So I'm excited about that as well. Um, all right. Till next time.